Welcome to Barley and Hops. Uh, today we're going to talk about the use of copper in a traditional pot still. Well, I've got a lot of feedback when we did our video on how to run a pot still because we didn't really cover a lot of the intricate details about column packing and uh, things like that. And the reason that we avoided that was because there are, there are two different views on both sides of the fence whether stainless steel or copper is the best to use. Whereas both are appropriate and um, our information sources, I use John Palmer's book on brewing. It's got a great chapter in it about metallurgy. Um, the homedistillers.org is another great source of uh, information. Um, there are many, many blogs out there that will fill you with information on which one's better or which one are, what are the advantages of one over the other. But let's talk briefly about copper. Uh, there's really three primary reasons, in my opinion, why copper is used in a lot of home stills. Uh, one is traditional. Um, just remember that back in the teens and the 20s and 30s, copper was readily available. Copper is an element, but copper was readily available. Um, copper is malleable, so it's easy to maneuver around. Now it's a lot more expensive than it wasn't. Stainless steel wasn't available till somewhere in the mid 20s. Um, and Copper also has a great uh, heat dissipation rate. So it will dissipate heat and will avoid some scorching. But the argument is that copper will, removes the sulfites uh, through the copper, through the interaction with the copper if it's in the vapor stream. And I, I've looked all over, I've done my studies. There, there is some data that will indicate that. And so I agree. Uh, if you want to improve the uh, flavor and the taste of your spirits, a little bit of copper in your in your column or a copper column itself would be advantageous. Um, but on the other hand, um, for those, that, and there are people out there that are sensitive to it, can tell you if copper was in the vapor stream by the taste uh, and they don't like it. So they go straight stainless steel. But, but let's look at both from both perspectives. Uh, normally when we, when we put something in the column, what we're trying to do is we're trying to give it a little bit more of a medium in order to start to condense, drop, it start sort of like a mini reflux action without actually being a reflux still itself. Copper is a very good medium for that, especially this uh, woven copper. As long as it's 100% it's pure copper. You don't want anything that's steel that's copper clad. Uh, that will start to dissipate and come off. Uh, you can use marbles. Marbles are a great medium because they do have a large surface area. They're made out of glass. They're easy to clean. You dump them out, rinse them off, clean them, shake them, and you can put them right back in and use them again. A lot of people like the ceramic rashing rings. And the ceramic rashing rings are also a very good medium inside of uh, your column. Uh, and they're also very, very easy to clean. They do have a huge surface area because they are hollow on the inside. So that's primarily why you use a column packing with the addition is if you're using copper, uh, the people want to use copper in order to ha have that chemical interaction with the copper to remove some of the sulfites. Primarily the sulfites are, are more resident in some of your fruits. So a lot of your uh, sugar washes, some of your corn washes um, and grains are less likely to have the sulfites than are the fruits. Well, let's talk about stainless steel in particular. Um, stainless steel is a composite or an alloy which is a mixture of, of, of different elements and what makes stainless steel stainless is the chromium and the nickel, you know, 18% and 8%. Uh, so the, the advantage of a, of a stainless steel is it's easy and clean and it doesn't tarnish whereas copper will, if you're using a copper stack, it'll tarnish. But, but I, I offer to you is that when it does start to tarnish and get that dull look, leave it that way because that is a protective coating on the copper. Uh, if you continue to remove that, and especially if you're using bleach, you'll start to have some chemical interactions with that and it may start to develop a black hue to it which is poisonous. And we've all seen a little bit of that greenish blue stuff that starts to build up on copper. You need to make sure you clean that off because that's all, that also can be poison. So I guess one of the disadvantages of copper is the requirement to actually clean it and keep it that clean because you can develop that greenish blue hue uh, or the blackness. Uh, that's one of the disadvantages, but the major advantage of copper is you are st you're sticking with tradition, your heat dissipation is a whole lot better, and you do have that interaction. Uh, the advantages of stainless steel are stainless steel is a little bit more available. 
a lot cheaper than uh, copper right now, uh, a lot easier to clean and a lot easier to maintain. So I only offer that to you as some information and, if you, and it's, your, it's your brewing pleasure. So if you like copper, use copper. You can actually put copper into a stainless steel column. But remember, anytime you use copper, if you're using copper in order for that sulfite interaction to remove those sulfites, make sure it's in the vapor stream. It does you no good to have it all in the pot or all in the collection vessel. Make sure it's in the vapor stream. And the only place you have the vapor stream, of course, is gonna be in your column. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.